the yeah, story. So, unfortunately, it seems as if the one Brian Kellen, one half of the fire and the kid, has been hit with sexual assault and misconduct charges, right? From, you know, stemming from a number of instances throughout the years. And in light of what's happening with Chris Elias, a part of you kind of thinks, hmm, maybe this was coming, innit? Because I do remember, <coughs> I think I mentioned it a couple of times on here, I remember listening to an episode with um, Joey Diaz where he sort of mentioned a few journalists were calling around different comedy clubs, fishing for stories about any misconduct on some of the OGs. And it felt as if there was a concentrated effort maybe to, if not if not to take advantage of the Crystal Lee um, takedown, was to maybe, it was a, if not take advantage of it, it felt as if there was like a concerted of effort to bring down the entire comedy store in some regard. Some people have hypothesized has to do something with Joe Rogan, that the actual target is him as soon as the Spotify deal was inked and maybe before that with the whole Biden thing and, you know, him basically saying that, you know, Biden is inept and he's not, not current, he hasn't got all these functions. Is that, is that always functional? What they say when people say that they're, that they're not really all there in the head, but regardless, right? He kind of was one of the main people in the sort of you know quote unquote mainstream to point out that maybe Joe Biden wasn't necessarily at all these powers to be the leader of the free world. And then we had the issue that some of the journalists had with him interviewing Bernie Sanders. So it feels as if like since then there's been a concerted effort to bring Joe Rogan down in some way, shape, or form. Right? They're kind of they're trying to make anything stick. Right? To try and break him down and maybe the crystal situation was a good chance to sort of jump on it and say hey you know you're friends with these guys and look at the stuff that they've done and by proxy we have to cancel you too now of course the benefit of being a jerogan is that you're uncancelable right because you got a few money that's why you do what he does that's why he's so incredible but you know because somebody off his platform somebody with his resources could be a little bit more um you could, he'd be forgiven to be a little bit more of an evil not an evil person but a less reasonable person but i guess that's what makes him special in that regard but you know they just it looks like they're making effort to do it or it could just be the fact that you know they uncovered the Chris Alea story and then Brian Callan just came walking in through the door easily because reading this story you do feel as if he has no leg to stand on really and it's a really um I guess was I guess was the fight and the kid fans you're not going to be that surprised really it's bad to say that really as you know <laughs> that this story comes out about him potentially raping somebody and you shouldn't be surprised but considering how he goes on on the podcast and the way he acts considering he's a you know you, you know I think a lot of these guys maybe it's a lot of humor but you would I, I would imagine if you're the wife of a Callum prior to his divorce you wouldn't be that amused with the way they speak about women and the way they talk about being on the road it kind of does come across a little bit um, adolescent right it, the, the, they don't really sound like grown up sometimes so when you hear these stories you usually believe them because you feel as if like you know they don't really treat being a comedian as professionally as they should and they usually you know take advantage of any sort of the benefits that come with it and sometimes they you know overstep the mark in this case um, to a really really great degree so this is from the Los Angeles Times it says actor Brian Callen accused of sexual assault and misconduct and the stories here is by one Amy Kaufman said the following. Um, as soon as she saw um, his name, Catherine Fior Tegeman broke out in a cold sweat. Her shirt damp. She scrolled through the text message from her best friend, alerting her that comedian Chris Delia was being accused of sexual misconduct by scores women on Twitter. Um, she'd never watched the stand-up's comment, uh, the comic stand-up, but she knew that he was a best friend of Brian Cullen, a fellow comedian actor. And Cullen, she'd long told those closest to her, had once raped her. That is a mad way to start off the actual article. God damn it. Lightheaded, she dogs onto Twitter um, to scan the allegations. She found that many of the tweets referred to not uh, referred not just to Delia's supposed misconduct, but to that of his tight circle of male comedians. She said, my first thought was, is something that happened with Brian? Take him and record. Reading all the comments, I thought, here it comes. I've known, I've, I, I've known how terrible this person is for 20 years, and maybe I'm not the only one. In a statement at the Times, Kellen immediately denied raping Tigerman and said that their encounter was consensual. Now, that first, obviously, allegation is mad in it already, right? Someone accusing you of rape, regardless of the situation at hand, is, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, it warrants a thorough investigation. But unfortunately, when you read the actual account of it and you kind of marry up Brian from what we know on the podcast and to some of the stories that he's mentioned, it does make some sort of sense. Now, again, it's an alleged incident. We have to go and give this guy his day in court. But considering what's happened to Chris Lear and also considering the fact that he was probably aware of this story 
prior to the Crystalia story maybe getting out there, I reckon, which is why they made a concentrated effort to sort of distance themselves from him, even though he's one of their best, better friends, Brendan and Brian in that regard. It really does make Brian Cannon look worse. The fact that he knew this story was maybe you know in the works and coming out i'm sure the editor kind of called him for comment prior probably explains why whitney cummins took down his episode of uh of her podcast too along with the crystal Lear one so for him to go for him to kind of you know essentially distance us from his, one of his best friends knowing full well that he had his own story that you know regardless of whether or not it's true or not he had his own issues um coming up was a really bad um misstep in his regard in his case because let's for, let's imagine a situation where he comes out and is a bit indifferent to the issue and says, hey, I'm just going to stick with my friend, like with Chris Lear's situation, right? Let's imagine Brian Callan comes out and says, hey, this guy's my best friend. I'm going to stick with him. Um, and I'm going to wait until more evidence comes out and then make a concentrated effort, but I'm not going to abandon my friend in their moment of need, whatever, right? Something really wafty like that. And it and then it transpires what's trans transpired now, where it looks as if Chris Lear isn't a pedophile. If anything, he's a creep, right? And then when your story comes out, you have number one you have an ally a public one that people are aware of people already know your stance and you can attack it head on but when you distance yourself from you know your friend that was accused of something that didn't that seemed a bit shaky at first and then you have an accusation that seems you know banked it seems like you're banged to rights for the most part it does really make you question like who advice are these guys taking man like what advice are they taking and again deleting of the pictures on your social is just all of it man you just think these guys like they dealt with the whole situation terribly but it also might be an indication of just how guilty they were that they were so nervous or so um clumsy in their approach to dealing with the crystalia stuff anyway it continues it says tigerman is not the only woman to claim that kind of was sexually inappropriate with her <laughs> So since June 17th, the day that Delia started trending on social media, three additional women told the Times that they had been mistreated by Callan. Uh, 53 describing troubling sexual incidents and ranging from assault to misconduct to disturbing comments. Their stories suggest a pattern of behaviour that spans decades going back at least to 1999. I love these articles, but she's being a bit hyperbolic. They're making him sound like a monster that was like preying on young, innocent women for uh, absolute decades. It, it obviously isn't a fact. I think... <laughs> Apart from the one story that is a category rape, from all of them, the rest of them just seem like a very horny man, and that's what you get from read or listening to the uh, fire and the kid. You do get the impression that Brian will just about try and tackle anything that comes across him, which is maybe a, a lesson in this story. You know, of course, don't rape women, right? That's abhorrent. You shouldn't be doing that at all. If someone says no, you absolutely back off and you go home. But I think for the dudes that make it late in their lives, having access or having, you know. Um, your star sun suddenly shining and really bright it doesn't mean you have to take advantage it's, it's the same like um, opportunities I'd imagine so right you don't say yes to everything you don't say yes to all the gigs you don't take all the opportunities you have to be a bit selective because now you've so you, you've actually arrived now you don't need to be you know so willing and and open to do just about anything and your show shouldn't be open and willing to take advantage of every single encounter that you might um, have with the opposite sex it's not how that works Some, it's a bit murky don't get me wrong in Hollywood I definitely understand that they there is a bit of a hypocritical tilt to it in that in one case, you know, you are kind of sometimes pushed to use your sexuality to get stuff that you want. But then in other cases, you have to sort of draw the line. So it can be a balancing act to do, but it, you can't be going around creeping on girls in shops and stuff like I mentioned in this article. That's just like way, way out of line. But, you know, it's, again, knowing what I know about these guys on the podcast, it should be no surprise. It says here, in the years since, three women claim that the Goldberg sector, they're trying to get him there, everything. And that's the thing that's off him too. He's dropped it again. Like, Brian just about made it, right, recently in Hollywood. He's been trying for decades, right? If, you, if you're a fan of The Fine Kid, you'll know that, you know, he spent most of his career essentially being a nearly man, right, and everything, right? He kind of came into the game being told incorrectly that he was going to be the next Tom Hanks. You know, that does something in your head, makes you think, you know, you're actually going to be the next Tom Hanks. He's supremely talented as well, don't get me wrong. He can actually act legitimately. He's got great stand-up. Um, improv skills are amazing. So everything is there except for him to actually make it in Hollywood. But, you know, as with, as with life, you know, certain things just don't work out the way you want them to work out. So he suddenly gets his foot in the door off the back of the podcast that he didn't take seriously in the first place and now suddenly boom it's all over 
Catilia says the Gobert actor continued to be both verbally and physically aggressive. An American apparel saleswoman said that in 2009, Callum pinned her against a wall of a fitting room against her will and began to kiss her. An inspiring actress who had a four year affair with Callum while he was married said that he told her in 2016 that women are, have a biological primal desire to be raped. Of course, that line is taken out of context. We don't know what they're talking about, but goddamn, it looks bad. One year later, a female comedian said he suggested she give him oral sex in exchange for stage seven money. <laughs> oh, these guys! Isn't it, honestly, this makes you just wonder, like, how, why were they so quick to throw Cal- I mean, Delia under the bus, like knowing this was in the works. Like, like it just makes them look horrible as friends, as human beings. Like, god damn it. When you know you have these, but that, I, I guess I sit in it. I guess the people that do throw the most stones have the most skeletons in their in their closet, right? The ones that are pointing the finger usually have a lot to hide themselves. But damn you, man! If I was the leader, I'll be like, you know, that's that's karma. Um, to Canada and all these allegations, all these other accounts. Sorry, he said, let me be very clear. I have never raped, forced myself upon any woman, nor offended, nor offered to trade stage time for sex ever. He said in a statement, I know the truth and I can only hold my head up high, remain true to myself and my family, my audience, and know that I will not allow the council cultures to subvert what I know as importantly, and, and as importantly, what they know is the truth. Okay, fair enough. That That's, you know, commendable in that regard. He did come out swinging. He's not taking it lying down. But to suggest this is council culture is a bit, you know, that's a bit of a stretch. This isn't council culture. These, this is what these are accounts from women who say that you were a bit of a, you know, a bit of a creep to the nth degree. Being accused of rape isn't council culture. Council culture is, you know, you suggesting maybe all lives matter and getting absolutely rained upon on social media. That's council culture. This isn't right. Someone accusing you of rape is definitely not council culture. But hey, you have to fight your corner. And again, he has to do this, right? He's got no option. Because even what, what's, what's the solution here? He comes out and he fights his case and it's fights his case and maybe convinces some people that he was set up or that that lady fabricates some part of the story. The people don't like him anyway, right? So I think they're looking, already looking, already looking to bury him just because of his association with Rogan or because of the things he said in the past. So there's no way he can win around. He can win those people around, and you know, when I show you the other bits and pieces, you'll figure out why. It continues, says, um, in recent weeks, Callan has come to defense of Delia. He didn't really. He said who last month he'd only ever had a consensual relationship and had knowingly um, pursued underage females. On June 8th episode of his podcast, Fire and the Kid, Callan described Delia as a ladies' man whom he'd never seen, heard, or engaged in illegal activities. And right now, I have to believe that because he's still a friend. Not really, is he? We need to delete all these pictures on your social, mate. Oh, God. Despite that assertion, within days, Callan has scrubbed his Instagram account of traces of Delia. Previously, the comic had played up their friendship on the app where he had. 800,000 followers about 1.4 fewer than Delia they appeared on stage together at the comedy store did stints on Joe Rogan's massively popular podcast and even closed a deal in the summer to make a prank show for Netflix the streaming network quietly scrapped plans for the docuseries after the headlines about Delia surfaced Jesus Christos um, and then it continues they said even Tiggerman who'd uh, tried who tried her best to avoid Callan since the 1999 was aware that Callan's relationship with Delia was part of their public persona. Um, every few years, she'd said against her better judgment, she'd Google his name and inevitably most of her searches links to Callan to Delia. When Tiggerman first met him in 1994, Callan was not established as an actor or comedian. Um, he had yet to be cast in an inaugural season of Mad TV, the sketch comedy series she herself joined uh, four years after his departure in 1997. He hadn't landed roles in prestigious television shows like Oz and Kingdom or scored cameos from his pal director Todd Phillips. They're putting everyone under here, isn't it? They're putting the pressure on everyone. These articles are the worst, man. They absolutely ruin you, ruin you. Because even if you bounce back from this, right, they've still muddied your name in the industry with all the people that you've sort of worked your entire life to get near it to of course he's probably within reason if those if the allegations are true you know he doesn't have anyone to blame by himself but these articles absolutely bury you man god damn it it says it can and it would be years before he became a serious regular on abc family sip con the goldbergs playing a gym teacher and a coach who's later on one of the main figures in a short-lived spin-off called scored in fact tiggerman's father actor bill fiore gave Callum one of his first acting gigs <laughs> a role in the mid-90s new york theater production this is what i mean about this, these guys sometimes times and i think fair enough right if you're gonna be a bit of a pussy hound right and try and attack everything that comes in your way fair enough yeah you know? I, I, I think sometimes if you get involved in the industry you should maybe treat the people that you work with male or female regardless of who you're attracted to with some with a bit more respect than you do randoms right there should be a bit of a unwritten rule that you there's a bit of a brotherhood sisterhood whatever it may be right that you kind of look after each other but if 
but if you're but imagine knowing that person in your industry trying to make, they're trying to make it in the same industry you're in and then also knowing that knowing their father right their father actually hooked you up with a gig and then doing what has allegedly been done it's like come on man you can't be doing that Anyway, continue. It says, years later, when Tegman moved to LA in 1999, she ran into Callan at a bank and he expressed excitement at the prospect of showing the 23 year old around town. Because, like, on here. Um, so they became friends, meeting up at group uh, dinners and trading stories about auditions. That spring, she booked a television pilot and Callan suggested he take her out to a celebrated dinner at Chaya, the late industry haunt. This is where it gets sketchy. When he arrived to pick her up at the West Hollywood apartment, Callan immediately commented on her outfit. She said, I come downstairs in these dumb jeans and grey long sleeve shirt and he goes, what are you wearing a bra for? Girls don't wear bras, take it off and call Tigerman now. She laughed it off and they go into her car. <coughs> Inconsequential detail, but you know, they're sort of framing the story. At the time, it could have been a joke, but when you read on, and I guess this is the Tigerman lady herself, it says, at dinner, she ordered a glass of wine and excused herself to go to the restroom. By the end of the meal, she'd consumed only about half of the glass but fell off, nauseous and disorientated. Now, I don't know if they put this in there because that's just generally how she felt or because they're alluding to the fact that he might have date raped her which is mad but again once you put yourself in these situations you are at the behest of these mad stories isn't it so she could be fluffing it a bit but i think they're sort of leaving it in they're sort of leaving it out for interpretation you sure you interpret what you want from this right but mostly it looks like you know they're 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 sued they're set they're kind of pushing direction of if you know he kind of slipped something in the drink as she went to the toilet which is um, still, um, when Ken suggested they head to a movie theater after dinner, she obliged. Back in the car, he attempted to find a newsstand where he could purchase a paper to look up showtimes, but ultimately decided to stop at his house to do so. You have to remember, it's 1999, so I assume they didn't have smartphones, or whatever it may be. But that's, you know, again, that's a tactic for him to get her back to her crib, which he essentially did. He says, at his home above the sunset trip, the two sat down on the couch and Callum began kissing Tiggerman. She was uncomfortable and felt ill, so she went to the bathroom, which... And again, I don't know how people read signs. Maybe some guys are different. Maybe some guys think the more she recoils, the more it's an invitation to come on to you. But I would also always kind of um, lean on the side of caution and say if somebody's generally not enjoying your experience, you should just maybe leave and back away or let them go home, right? You shouldn't be trying to pursue it because, you know, you, you are allowed to have a bit of bias remorse. You know, I'm sure after a couple of drinks, some good chats and catch up with your close friend in the industry, there might be some desire there to think, you know what, why don't we take this at the next level? Why don't we actually seal the deal? Cool. But there isn't also the idea that once you actually sit down in a person's home and you get and you're familiar with their settings and you, you know, you maybe sober up a bit, you might think, actually, I'm not on this anymore. And it can be because I think most girls are aware that they, most people, girls are conscious of not leading guys on i don't think most girls are like that like oh i'm gonna you know um i don't know i'm gonna just keep teasing him most girls don't want to do that so they're gonna be kind they're gonna be quite coy about it not to kind of you know again not to maybe piss you off or get on your bad side especially if you're actually generally friends so you, you owe it yourself to read the signs to be like oh, cool she's gone to a toilet during this sort of like you know my um key foreplay stage that might be a sign that she doesn't really want to do this anymore especially when they come out and, they, and their vibe completely changes unless she comes out and straddles you completely and jumps on you that's a different thing but if their vibe completely changes they separate they push themselves away they go to the other side of the settee they start asking about where the nearest train station is it probably should lead them to go home she says, yeah, I remember looking in the mirror and being like, okay, you just have to tell him to take you home. This isn't um, going right, Tiggerman said. I needed to sit with him and have a conversation about how we were best buds and I was in love with another dude. And again, that's the issue, isn't it? How are you going to someone else's house, even if he's your friend, when you got a boyfriend? That's madness. But hey, uh, but when she met her in the restroom, she said, Callum was immediately outside the doorway. He moved behind her, staring her in the mirror. He said, look how hot you are. You could be a playboy playmate. And you could definitely hear him say that as well in your head, isn't it? He said that within moments, she said, she found herself in the bedroom where she pushed her down in the mattress as he ran his hands over her body she said she kept saying no in her mind her mind drifted off to a crime scene she recently seen on tv in which a woman repeated her name aloud to abuse and attempt to humanize herself to him so i said i'm catherine i'm catherine it's me please this is not what i want to be doing right now she said and he's like you're gonna love this this is oh, jesus christ you're gonna love this we're going to go we're going to get this out of the way you're going to love this you're going to be my girlfriend if you watch Chief K, as again, in a jokey manner, you could definitely hear Crying Callan saying this, but God damn it, this is not good, isn't it? This is terrible. Bloody hell. She felt powerless. If she screamed, she feared no one would hear her from his private home. She didn't think she could escape from under the weight of his body. So she checked out, eventually ceasing her, her pleading and remaining silent.
God almighty. He said, this is not a calorie remembers the incident. He stressed to the Times that on Thursday that Tigerman claims a rape are demonstrably false, saying that he had both agreed to have sex. Bloody hell, man. What's this bit here? It says, uh, um, da, 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 da. Tigerman said that after the night night encounter was over, she immediately began crying and searching for her underwear. Her bottoms had been thrown to the ground where Callum's dog had chewed the holes in them. Noticing her tears, he tried to calm her down. She said, oh, come on. What am I? What am I? A big bad rapist? I'm not a big bad rapist, he said. Um, come on. You're going to be my girlfriend now. We needed to get this out of the way. <laughs> oh, my God. Can not respond to question about this comment? It continues on here and then i think the other one's the so imagine let's say for instance the issue he has here if you're kellen right if you're going to be his, uh what do you call it um what do they what do they call them disaster pr this uh crisis pr whatever it, that time is right the issue he has here is that this first story could be a bit of you know you could you could argue that you don't remember it happening that way and you know it's a bit of he says she said if you want to go down that route of course i think anyone accusing you of rape I, I, i'm not a believer that women willy nearly go around accusing people of rape i don't think that's a thing there are some anomalies out there but i think for the few to go out there and do a whole photo shoot with los angeles times recount your story again there is some validity to it maybe you didn't maybe in, in in hindsight you probably think it's a rape and it didn't happen that way at the time but there's definitely some pain there about the encounter you had with that person so if you're Callan, you're gonna say cool i can maybe chalk this up to he says he said the issue he has is the other stories in context of this make him look far worse so let's go down to this one i think this is the one at the store where it's like god damn it this is horrible but 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 was it green yeah so this is the one with green right um uh the the the, the, the start. yeah so here is so uh, as Callan star roses uh sorry rose sorry other women said his brazen behavior continued in 2009 Callan walked into an american apparel store in pittsburgh rachel green an employee there had no idea who he was but her colleagues recognized him and pulled up an mdd to show her his credits which you know if you've worked in a retail store you'll know if anyone famous comes along you, your staff members don't know them or your colleagues you definitely whack out your phone or go in the store till computer whatever it may be and google their name and be like oh shit that's so and so isn't it so it's a standard procedure so the actor meanwhile had ventured to the second floor of the store an area that required employee supervision i'm not sure if this was like a what like a private stylist bit i don't know american power had that but hey she said so green trailed him upstairs and helped him gather clothes he wanted to try on he was friendly she said though they though he did emerge from the fitting room wearing only his boxer briefs numerous times which you know knowing callan's humor you'd think that he'd do something like that right Again, I don't think it's appropriate, especially in someone's workplace, unless maybe she actively said, hey, I know who you are. You're a funny dude. You know, she maybe said some lines about his comedy and he felt comfortable enough to do that. But I still think, you know, you shouldn't be crossing that line at someone's workplace. It's just not on completely in it because, you know, you eventually get her in trouble. Anyway, even if she was game, you get her in trouble. The following day, Callan returned to the store and again requested Green's help, which, you know, pff, I don't know if that's stalking, but that doesn't look that great, especially if you haven't made your intentions known in the beginning. This time he was wearing a speedo. So he purposely went in there wearing a speedo and if his trousers are like, fuck me, Callan. Um, maybe he's just going swimming, I don't know, but this doesn't look good. Anyway, so that's what I was saying. So it continues. It says it was one of those um, tight, gross little things, she said. He ran out of the fitting room to grab something, so I went in to get clothes he'd already tried on. And then he comes in, pushes me against up the against the wall, closes the curtains and starts kissing my neck and as he asks me if I'm going to get in trouble. Bloody hell. And again, we don't we don't know there's obviously both sides of the story this might be something else but the issue here is that even if this happened and it was consensual you still can't be doing this as a celebrity as somebody you know as a public figure you can't be going around to you know you can't be going around to american apparel stores and pit in the middle of pittsburgh and trying to you know accost or come on to or trying to you know um trying to seduce you know the store assistants that work there because number one how old are they anyway right we don't know let's say they are of age or let's say they're really young like you know your older dude going into a store like that with young employees trying it's just it's just weird and it? it's just really inappropriate um he shouldn't be doing it for purpose it, even if he comes out and says hey this was actually consensual the fact that you're in the store doing this is just bizarre to say the least especially in context with the other story shocked green said she pushed Callan off her and ran downstairs telling her colleagues she'd been he, she just attempted to make out with her <laughs> she said i remember not really taking it seriously bloody hell he's fucked but seriously which is something i felt guilty about frankly for a couple of years said lydia a co-worker who asked that her last name not be used 
Lydia is one of the two work co-workers who told the Times that Green immediately told them something untoward had occurred with Callan that day. As I'd see him on TV over the years, I'd be like, that's really not okay. And I cried and I tried to laugh it off. Bloody hell, that is immensely bad. Kind of full stuff. So that was, and then the last one, I guess, is the one where he was having an affair with a lady, but... And then we've got here uh, Whitney Cummins is being thrown out of the bus, which is an interesting one too. If you've seen the developments of Whitney Cummins, she's completely like, you know, it seems like from what we've heard, she's definitely distanced herself from that whole crew of lads. But in conclusion, it's definitely a wrap for a minute. Oh, Tiffany. Oh, and then you got the Tiffany King one, right? That was probably the worst as well. That was the one where, you know, let's see this one where it starts from. It starts from, by the time, so two, yeah, kings each other incident. Let's go back up here. Da, da, da. Yeah, sorry. In the midst of the contentious divorce and fighting for custody of the daughter. Yeah, so it's Wingo. So, no, he's got here. But, 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 where's King start from? Let's say here. I'm a rapist, fighting the kid. Callum, Whitney, different. Cool, as there is. Oh, she's got the story too, of Whitney Cummins, isn't it, right? Um, it is. <laughs> Oh, he's absolutely fucked. I don't know what he's going to do. It's supposed to be there's a story coming out that he's going to make. He put, he put out a statement that he's going to record a special TFAK episode and kind of defend himself. But I don't know how, what he's going to say is going to actually change the narrative around this. But this is a part that's really funny too. It says, um, Kellen, oh, you know, gross if you're, <laughs> if you're one of his victims. He says, Callan often played up um, his reputation as a self-proclaimed dirtbag. In 2006, the episode of his podcast featuring comedian Whitney Cummings as a guest, Callan joked about how he'd been sexually harassing her since early in her career. Cummings then revealed that Callan had once asked for a ride home after a comedy show and pulled his pants and pulled his penis out of her in her car. He said he didn't remember the incident, but still believed her version of events. He says, my definition of creepy is that if I'm into you, you're not going to know, you're going to know it front and center. He said, it's when the guys kind of pull this gentleman thing and he's being a really nice guy and then you look and he's got his dick out you're a real ser you're a serial killer be honest about your creepy which of course i've always been <laughs> that's a problem with podcasting you know you've got so many hours of people just talking you know comfortably amongst friends you know about their past lives or whatever it may be but then when you fuck up and do something when they kind of pull up the quotes it makes you look horrendous my issue with this isn't the fact that he said it say what you want to say the issue would be that if you're a comedian of his stature and you have a wife and kid at home, it's a bit untoward to be talking like this about how you would be with the girls and creepy and stuff because you're a married man. You know, you've got a kid at home. Even if you're doing it, you should just be, you know, you should be at least trying to present the image of some kind of, um, um, I don't know, some kind of maturity, right? Uh, an image of some sort of loyalty to your wife at home this would really put my back up if you again it depends what kind of partner you are if you're the kind of partner that, that doesn't give a crap and you think it's all entertainment you let your you know your um your artist partner your creative partner go out and do whatever they need to do to so they can make sure they put a roof over your heads and feed your children and fair enough but i would assume you wouldn't be too happy hearing this and hearing him talk about this it's just not on um and you obviously wouldn't be too keen with him giggling about it's whitney cummings either and um, says it continues um though cummings was laughing as she recounted a story in the fire and the kid she also said she gleaned that Callum was a type of guy who does not hear no a lot or don't listen to it you don't take it seriously god almighty he says i'm a rapist Callum said in jest of course it's a joke but going in a line that just looks horrible right saying that um i remember being like oh i'm going to have sex with him because he's not going to take no for an answer i'm going to do this and get him <laughs> get him to go away said Cummings on the show she declined to comment on this article which then goes to show you why cat why whitney Cummings was being such a you know, a, a BITCH of the issue regarding it, right? She was aware of these whole issues. I think the story, she was aware of it. I'm pretty sure they probably reached out to her regarding both Callan and Delia when those when the Callan story broke. I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure she was probably mentioning it, which is, explains why she deleted the Callan episode of her podcast. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Spare a thought for Whitney Cummings, isn't it? What is she to do, really? Isn't it? Do you come out and throw your friends under the bus? which she kind of has done, not really. She hasn't really said nothing, but if you generally haven't seen, because I don't know, sometimes you think, sometimes it's a bit unfair the way they treat women in these instances, right? When they're associated with dudes that do stuff like this. Because what do you expect us to say? She might generally have no idea that he got up to stuff like this, right? Which I which I kind of doubt, because I think that industry is too small not to be aware of what you're, 
you know one of your colleagues that you've kind of come up in the ranks is doing but she's really in a between a hard and a rock place isn't it she comes she comes really hard at him other comedians will kind of look at her with a bit of a side eye and she'll get ostracized and then she'll be in the amy schumer camp of things who you know she went super ham on Callan. actually i'll probably switch that on there now this is amy schumer's um instagram post that she posted um which again is maybe an indication of where of kind of Callan's future that's basically done schumer probably she represents the industry she is hollywood she's definitely separated herself from that la comedy scene and turned into a um more of a i don't know what do you say a social justice comedian in that respect in the same way that service silverman has so she doesn't really think that she owes any she has any loyalty to that crew at all so she posted a screenshot of the article and written here the la times just published this article by amy um kindler about the repeat offense of brian callan thank you to the brave women coming forward and sharing their stories you're saving the women who may have come after you and to the comics who are annoyed with me for standing with these ladies what are you so afraid of of course, you know, she definitely positioned herself away from the stand up, says, Yeah, available on my number in the bio. If anyone wants to talk about Brian or anyone else who has sexually assaulted you at Brian, I have a nice day. Oh, brutal. And considering Brian Callan's wanting to make it in Hollywood for ages, and, you know, he's def this is definitely going to hurt for sure. It's definitely going to hurt. He continues here, it says, Cummings was not only the female comic who remembers uh, surprising Callan, so, so experience with Callan, Tiffany King first met Callan while performing on a comedy circuit in Hollywood. And though he is always touchy-feely with her, she counted him as a friend. He'd given her stage time before one of his gigs in Houston. So when she found herself down on her luck in 2017, she put his name on a list of contacts to reach out to. In the midst of a contentious divorce and fighting for custody for her daughter, emotionally you know, vulnerable, it seems like King had been seeking financial aid from colleagues at the time she was living in the Pennsylvania and saw that Callan had a show within, within driving distance when she arrived at Helium Comedy Club she approached Callan and began crying as she relayed the situation oh this already looks bad it's a, um, he goes are you on drugs King said I don't understand you Tiffany you're a really beautiful woman but there's not, there's something that's always been off about you you need to learn how to work with what you've got now this sounds bad recounting it but that could have generally been like one of those sort of like um, creative moments creative um, recommendations where you're like hey come on man are you in drugs like you should be more confident about yourself stop doubting yourself right Let, you have to work with what you have I can see that coming across well but when somebody's crying and they're emotional and they're vulnerable that probably isn't the best advice to give them right that's not really in jest they're not really in a jokey jokey mood um, so of course that isn't good <laughs> read it right when you read it back he said he declined to offer King managed to help but invited her to a dinner after his show. Um, she said they ate and then Callan asked if she could give him and his opening actor a ride back to her Airbnb. About 10 minutes into the des from the destination, she said the opener, who goes by the name of Stevie Blue Eyes but is legally named Steve Pearson, asked if he let out of the car, which is odd, but hey. King said she obliged and continued down the road to drop off Callan, but instead of going out of his vehicle, she said he said, she said he asked, How about that blowjob? Bloody hell. I'm not going to give you a blowjob for stage time she responded he said no I'll give you my some money too which I don't know if it's a joke or if it's just a really brutal reply to somebody who you would have thought was a friend it continues to said she rebuffed him and drove home in tears but in his statement at times Callan denied ever offering to trade stage time for sex and Pearson an ex-convict um, who spent time in federal prison for selling drugs insisted that King dropped him and Callan off simultaneously we got out at the same time and went upstairs he said there was no separation she was never alone with her he was never alone with her so again man he says he said we don't really know but I think those two stories alone are enough to sort of bury him and then I think on top of that the main issue that kind of Callan has with this is is that the sentiment around him especially just around TFAT K fans has really changed it feels like in the last few months or so right and most of it has to do with COVID, right? The, the way these guys dealt with COVID really kind of, for me personally, rubbed me up the wrong way and sort of like turned me off. I haven't listened to the show in four in ages, right? I much prefer to listen to the King and the Sting stuff that um, uh, Brendan does. I kind of prefer that a lot more. But this is a good little compilation that kind of gives you an idea of just how reckless they were um, in terms of dealing or talking about COVID on their show. I gave it to Chan. Where'd you get it, Chan? That little yeah, fish, dog. Let's hear it. Where'd you get it, Chan? Where did I get it? I mean, <laughs> if we do the math, it, it could have been Brian. <laughs> could have been me. And the screen here says day one, uh, 24th of July, 2020. You excited about San Antonio? <clears throat> 
Sorry. And that's before they're leaving to go to San Antonio, right, on their comedy tour. Dry cough. Brennan's giving him that weird look. And this is obviously prior to them saying that COVID is not a big deal. Um, Brian Brennan was talking about the numbers and saying that it's only affecting a certain portion of the population. If you get it, you'll be okay. The governor's are, the governor Newsom's overreacting. They were just really being proper cunts about it. Just because they wanted to get up on stage in the comedy store or go back to, you know, as it looks like going, going on road and accosting random women in bloody American apparels over maybe. But they, tr- they just went about it so badly. I don't worry. Lost my throat. Wrong with your throat huh? Yeah. Uh, but San Antonio. You can, you can bank on us being San Antonio Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You're dang right you can. You dang. You can bank on us being San Antonio Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You dang right you can. You dang god darn You're right. You dang boy. goddamn right. <laughs> We're excited. And then day four, 29 for the six. We fresh from San Antonio slash Austin, where I went to look for some property. He's wearing a mask who so can protect his health. Just shoot him in the fucking head. Taking the piss out of people wearing masks. Sounds Lovely. Good. Sounds good. How about that? Uh, me and Callan got the COVID test. The little no- nasal Just got slide. swabbed up. Papa Almost. didn't do well with Already, Bre- Bre- Brian's the nasal slide. sounds no, I horrible. Do I don't like Light. it. I'm going to die of something. So, you know, I just come. Brennan's well now it? going yeah. to get an IV. <laughs> that looks like a large bag of piss. <laughs> it does. Uh, what, what, there's a lot of stuff in there, huh? How many, how many things are in that? A lot of steroids. <laughs> and this is, and also imagine, Brendan's being so um, dismissive of the COVID, of COVID, but of course, because, you know, he has the resources able to go to a private doctor to have numerous IV drips. So if he's coming out saying that, hey, it's not a big deal, um, the sun defeats it. I went for a 20 mile bike ride after being, you know, positive and not quarantined properly. Of course he can do that because he's got everything, you know, is in front of his doorstep to make sure it doesn't get worse. But if you're not in that position, imagine hearing these sort of guys talk about us this way. Vitamin C, B12, zinc. Magnesium. Papa's run down. Run down, run down. You're all, you're all run down. Papa's run down. Glutathione. Papa's run down. You're all, you're all run down. WHO. Fuck the WHO. Okay. The guy had a rifle and the girl had a gun, and they're just kind of like. Nice cough. WHO. Fuck the WHO. There's no, there's no talking. I'm gonna have my AR-15. That's right. And you pass my gate, you're getting lit the fuck up. I agree. Bad boy. WHO. Fuck the WHO. And then, of course, day seven, second of July. I laugh at COVID. Do you really feel I fine? Oh. I woke up all kind. Of, I've been for the past uh, since Tuesday. I was all kinds of achy, all fucked up. Jesus Christ! And of course, he passed on to producer. Shoulders and my neck. And you got COVID. Dude. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. Did you shake hands with Brandon? You got COVID. Dude. <sighs> horrendous human beings isn't it? and i think that effectively was what sort of sealed the deal for a lot of fans that probably were maybe not on the fence with all the hate that brendan and brian get lately but this definitely sent it over the edge man they i don't know i wonder what happens well, what turns them into these kind of people they were pretty decent in the beginning i really enjoyed it one of my favorite shows to watch actually the fire and the kid but over time it's just really, really gone downhill. It might be just the nature of their relationship has sort of changed, but bloody hell. But yeah, in context, you couple that with the fact that people don't like them anyway, and then this story comes out. I don't think there's any real situation that arises unless Callan has receipts or emails or he has a different account that maybe, you know, somehow you can, you know, slip in there that, oh, they're in a relationship and she used to live with him. I don't know what you can say that's going to discount any of those stories, really. Maybe, you know... Maybe you could just deny that you that ever happened. You don't recount them. I don't know. But to save his career, I think it's, I don't know how that kind of, maybe his career is done in Hollywood, but in terms of being able to do podcasts, I think he'd probably be all right. The diehard Tfat K fans might just, you know, not believe the woman in the story overall, but bloody hell, man, what a crappy situation for all involved. And again, it goes to show, you know, if you just would have stuck up for his friend, he probably might have been in a better situation. This, even if it was true, right? He might have had a bit more of a, he might have been given more of a leeway considering what's happened and what's transpired with Aaliyah. But we're going to be waiting with bated breath with what's happened with their show, whether or not it happens. I don't think it's actually going to happen. I think some, someone sensible will come in and tell them, hey, don't talk about this in ca- on camera um, until we get legal representation because, you know, it just isn't the right way to go about things. Even if he knows the, what the truth kind of is, I don't think it's a good idea. But hey, 
they've done much stupider things in the